Hello, great people. Here we are again. And this is um, the second part of uh, Living for the Glory of God or just the topic that we are doing for God's glory. And I'll start by saying uh, that I'll be introducing a theology that I came across uh, a few years ago that have that has really defined the kind of Christian that I am today. But most importantly, it has defined how I do life in terms of living for God's glory. So the, the, the theology is basically the cat and dog theology. And I'm sure, well, most people haven't heard about it. So I will just take a few minutes and explain. Um, the cat and dog theology is a basic uh, concept or teaching that is based on the study of the characters of a cat and the characteristics of a dog. Now, when I talk about the cat and the dog, I'm sure that many of us understand it because at some point in your life, you have interacted with a cat and you have interacted with a dog. And if you have been observant enough, you realize that these two animals behave very differently. You know, like very, very differently. These two animals, um, how, they, how they go about their lives is very different. So I will draw examples from my personal life. So growing up as a young girl, at one point, my parents got a cat. And so one time my dad had bought some nice meat in the house and my brother and I were very excited because uh, there's nothing as good as just having nyama mingi because you know you will definitely have a lot to eat. And so with the excitement of wanting to just prepare some good stew with my brother, we get to the kitchen and realize that the meat that we had set aside to prepare was missing. It was actually wrapped. It was missing. And... A few minutes later, we just hear some noise and, uh, you know, like, you know those noises? And then we, we just check under the table and the cat was feasting on our meat. What we did to that cat is probably something we do not want to talk about in public. But basically, with all the love that we had shown that cat, with the, the milk that we had already poured for this cat, the cat still wanted to have our meat. And that is very typical of cats. A few years later, we moved and my parents got a dog. But this is a very different experience. Every time we would sit outside and just be chatting over one thing or another, the dog would always find its way to sit where we are and always looked like he he was listening into our stories and for some reason was very re ready to follow us wherever we went. So when you just stand up, he'll follow you. And every time in the morning when we woke up and opened the door, you would hear, you would hear him on the door, very excited that you have come. And these two differences for me made a lot of sense when I came across the cat and dog theology. Because the cat theology or or rather the person we will call the cat Christian in today's example, is a Christian who behaves like a cat. No matter how much milk they have, they still want to go for the meat. No matter how much, um, no matter how much you pet them, they want you to pet them more. But on the other hand, we have the dog. The dog is saying, um, if you feed me, fine. But just seeing you, I am excited. Whether you have come with my food or not, I am just excited to see you. And I'm sure for people who own dogs, you, you, you get that sense of feeling. When you get back home and you have a cat, if your cat was like seated chilling somewhere, it will probably just move and prowl, kiddo and go here, right your back and all, and you know, get back to its business. But a dog will behave like you haven't been home for ages and they'll be there. If you're driving in, they would want to just jump around and wait until you open the car, uh, the door and, and get off. You're literally telling it, stop, just don't jump on me. This is, this is becoming too much. So the dog Christian relates with God in, the, in that perspective where now the dog Christian is saying, God, just having you in my life is best thing that could ever happen to me. Just knowing that I have you in my heart, ah, anything you send me to do, I will do. Then the cat Christian is actually saying, yeah, so God, you showed up. Ah, okay, good, good to know, good to know. But then when I'm hungry, I'm like, meow, meow, please give me milk. And so basically, for the cat Christian, the whole concept of salvation and life is about them. The literally 
me, myself, and I. For the dog Christian, it is not about me, it is about them. So there is a common saying that, and a joke that says, the cat says, you love me, you feed me, you pet me, I must be God. And the dog says, you love me, you pet me, you feed me, you really must be God. And so I want you to think about it in this context today. Are we cat Christians or are we dog Christians? Are we Christians who are saying, you died for me? You created all things for me? You made the Garden of Eden for me? You bless me? You, you, you do all this for me? I must be God. Or are we saying, God, you created me. You have loved me. Jesus died for me. He has he has, he has he has loved me even when I did not understand the concept of love. And you are broken enough to say you must be God. And that is the difference. When it comes to living for God's glory, the dog characteristic of a Christian is one who is at a point who is living not for themselves, but for the glory of God. The dog Christian is saying, God, even in my prayer, I'm not about commanding you and forcing you and telling you what I need to get done, but rather I am keen to sit at your feet and ask, so mm -hmm, you are God and I am not. What's the plan? What's your will? What do I do? The cat Christian on the other side is about myself and I. And that is why I think um, being in the church for a while, I listen to feedback that people give, especially on a regular Sunday service. And just from that feedback, you can be able to tell, you can be going, ah, ah. Ah, it's okay, I get where you're coming from. When someone says, ah, you know, th those songs, Kwang was equals in Aniguza, you know, and, and the whole service, you know, should have been a certain way for them. And you're like, okay, okay, I hear you, I hear you. And there is someone else who, you guys choose how the service goes for me. I was in the presence of my father and that is what mattered the most. And there is another person who's saying, as I parent my children, it's not about my reputation. It's not about unani aibisha, unani, unani, unani. It's about God's glory. So the cat Christian is saying, whatever you do as a child is to make me, as your parent, look good. Because, I mean, look at me. Look at me. But the dog Christian parent is actually saying, child, we will go through this life, but ultimately... You and I are living for the glory of God. So if I have to punish this child, it's not because I am frustrated or embarrassed or because they have, they're bringing shame to my household, but it is because it would glorify God that I raise up a child who has the fear of the Lord in their heart. And we could apply this in very many other aspects of our lives. But I just want you to take time and assess yourself. Assess the prayers you make. Assess the the conversations you have, the decisions you make, how you relate with God in your personal time and be able to gauge and see, am I a cat Christian? Am I a dog Christian? Sometimes, to be honest, I find myself selfishly just wanting to be a cat Christian. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit who constantly reminds me that, Gracie, it's not just for you. Just like we talked about in the previous video, it is for the glory of God. If Jesus would have been a cat, at the point where they started talking um, smack at him, he would have proven that he was God. But because there was a cause that was greater, he went through all the shame, all the pain, all the heartache, up to the point where the very people who he was dying for, who he was reconciling to God, declared that he be crucified, but he still went through the process. That is just how much living for God's glory should be a priority for us. I pray that for you today, as you spend time in prayer after listening to this word, that you will just ask God to show you what exactly are the intentions in your heart. Are you living for yourself and for your glory? Or are you living that God will be glorified? God bless you. See you next time.